guys, what's up? In this video, I'm super excited to talk about ChatGPT's new image generation capabilities. These are completely off the chart. Obviously, most designers are talking about it. Those who aren't talking about it are definitely missing out. I think this is going to get rid of a lot of graphic designers and the need for graphic designers. Obviously, a bunch of graphic designers are going to start now using these tools themselves. So they're going to up level themselves. So it's really important for you to up level yourself as well. So you don't stay behind. Now, there are a lot of things that people are doing with chat GPT's image generation, like for example, creating images of themselves in Studio Ghibli art style or any other art style. But let's talk about some of the other things, more valuable things that you can do with chat GPT in your day to day life. So for example, the first thing I want to talk about is actually generating ads. Now, I have a bunch of examples from Twitter. I'm not going to be showing you all of these by myself because obviously that's going to take a lot of time. But imagine you just give it a bottle and you just talk about give it a prompt like this and have it generate something. And there you go. It just generates it. Honestly, it feels like magic. It's insane. Very similarly, imagine you basically have something in your hand. You just asked uh, ChatGPT to just come up with something crazy. And here is something that it actually came up with, which looks pretty freaking inc incredible. Here's another example where you can just have photo shoots, but I want to talk about photo shoots later, but you can just ask it to generate ads, just pure ads based on the data that you've provided. Even if you don't provide data, like it's actually going to generate something awesome for you, but you can add and include data as well in there and it can give you some pretty amazing stuff. Obviously, as you can see, some things are not centered, so it's not completely perfect, but even then it's creating just something, just some incredible artwork. You can use the artwork that it actually generates and use it in your ads, even if you don't want to play with typography. Here are some other examples of what it's actually doing and how amazing stuff that it actually generates. It's just like blowing my mind. Here are some examples as well, where a person just has this on his desk or lying on his desk. He can just ask it to generate an ad based on that or a beautiful image based on that. And it just does that. I mean, just check out this image. Just check out how beautiful it looks. I mean, pretty freaking amazing stuff. Something that actually used to take days or hours can now just be done in seconds. Here's another example. A person is just holding his tape, measuring tape. And it just generates that measuring tape on a beautiful background. Here's another one that I actually just did. I gave it a really um, bad image of my GUI controller uh, that is controls my AC remote. And it, I just asked it to generate a luxury photo shoot for it. And here's what it generated. I mean, just amazing stuff, honestly. So that's one. The other thing that you can do is you can generate awesome photo shoots with it as well, which is very similar to some of the stuff that we talked about, but this is more related to product photo shoots. So you can just give it like, for example, a 2D render or a 2D image of your particular product as well, as well and just ask it to convert uh, and just ask it to create a luxury photo shoot of this particular product. And it's just gonna, it's just gonna do that. You can even ask it to change the background and stuff, add elements and stuff, and it does a really great job at it. I've experienced it myself as well. Here's another example. You just give it something like this, and you just ask it to actually replace the text with this, actually change this, change that, change the coloring, and that's pretty much it. I mean, you just need that, and it's gonna do that. It has really great spatial recognition as well. Here's another example. You have a label. You can just ask it to actually generate or place the label on top of an actual physical product. And there you go. Very similar examples of this particular thing. Imagine you have an image like this. You ask it to generate um, this particular product on a really nice background and actually generate something like this. This is just check out the quality, man. Just check out the quality. Check out the water droplets on this particular image. So freaking insane. And actually, this guy even generated an image based on Kling. So you can even check that out. I mean, so freaking amazing stuff. So that's second. The third thing that you can do is you can have a sketch and you can have ChatGPT basically ask you to generate that sketch and convert it into an actual image, an actual 3D image or a realistic image. And it's going to do that as well. So here's the sketch. And then you can actually see the image, which is pretty insane. Here's another example, which you can actually use to generate. Like, let's say you have a sketch. So you can actually generate, let's say, YouTube thumbnails as well. But I'm just talking about sketches here. You have a sketch, you can just ask it to actually generate uh, an actual image based on that as well, which is pretty amazing. On top of that, obviously you have YouTube thumbnails that you can generate. So you, for example, have some images, you can insert another image and you can say, hey, actually use the same thing or use the same format and actually generate something else with an image that I provided. I'm not sure if this guy actually provided an image or it actually inserted the image itself, but you can obviously provide an image 
to make uh, the the picture even more realistic and have an actual image generated. Very similarly, this person had an image of himself. He just asked to actually convert that to a YouTube thumbnail for 10 must known facts before moving to Dubai and just check this out. I mean, this is a pretty top notch thumbnail. I don't know what people are going to actually be doing like the YouTube thumbnail creators, but this is insane. Either they're going to up level themselves and they're going to create 10x more effective thumbnails or something along those lines, or they're just going to be left behind. Very similarly, you can even go ahead and actually ask it to generate infographics to explain certain things as well. And it has great, uh, obviously, context on why certain things happen as well. So it can actually use that context to generate, for example, some images as well. Here's an example of ChatGPT just one-shotting history infographics. I mean, amazing freaking stuff. One other thing that I personally actually think is going to be really good is actually using or generating similar objects with references. Uh, so for example, I have mid journey open for me. So imagine I'm searching for a car. I really like this car and I actually want to go ahead and actually generate multiple types of objects using this particular car. So I'm just going to go and come to chat GPT. I'm going to open up a new context. I'm going to say that I really like this car generate a bus with the same design or something along those lines. So here we have a bus in the same style. Now I can ask it to generate something else as well. Like for example, an ambulance. Now an ambulance, maybe even a, a plane and stuff along those lines. And it's going to start generating that. So I can actually just have it generate a bunch of assets that I actually want with a very similar style. And I can just have my own library that I can create for a client and stuff along those lines. I mean, honestly, just check out the design aesthetics. I mean, it knows that a school bus is also yellow, so it, so it kept it yellow. But this particular illustration of an ambulance is so freaking neat. I mean, it nailed it, honestly. This is amazing stuff. I can't imagine where this is going to go in a year, in two years, in five years. But man, so overwhelming, yet so exciting. Obviously, the last thing that you can do, which is pretty straightforward, is just basic image creation. So, for example, and it's not just about basic image creation, it can do a lot of editing and modifications to the images that you've created. Like, for example, I asked it to create a black hole in space that's purple. So here I have a black hole. Obviously, I can change it. I can even give it some context as to maybe I actually want to generate something like this and it's going to generate that particular art style as well. But I'm OK with this. I mentioned it that I want to make it a, uh, a poster and have it say infinite possibilities. So we have that here. Display this poster inside of Figma, inside of a MacBook Pro 16 inch. It even does that to a certain extent, even though obviously it doesn't really say MacBook Pro really well. Then I say replace the black hole with three alien spaceships. So it even has an understanding of the image and where we actually have a black hole, which is pretty insane. I then ask it to make the image realistic behind a realistic background and tilt the MacBook 30 degrees horizontally. I mean, just freaking imagine that. I also asked it to add some gray rocks beside the MacBook and also a plasma in a bottle on the right. It did that. And I just basically asked it to do something incredibly hard, which is replace this surface with water. Now just check this freaking out. I mean, check out the, uh, the reflections here. The reflections are pretty insane. Obviously, it says media and pro, so that's not accurate. I can ask it to maybe say something or I can obviously manually replace this myself. But honestly, this is so freaking amazing and I can't wait to see where this goes and how this actually transforms our industry.